Okay, here we have a question to do with a triangle. It's not a right, right angle triangle, but it is a trigonometry question because we're trying to find the angle in this triangle. Now, uh, the front of the exam paper, you're always given the formulas to do with this, so let's have a look at those. So in any triangle, A, B, C, we have these three rules. Now, we're not trying to find the area of a triangle, so we're not using that rule. And we've got to decide if we're going to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. It can be quite tricky to figure this out, but this is the way I do it. When I'm looking at a question, I look at what I have and what I need to find. So I have an angle and two sides, and I'm trying to find an angle. So in total, I've got two angles that this question involves and two sides. When that's the case, you're going to be using the sine rule. Now, the reason why it's not the cosine rule is because in a cosine rule, you need to have three sides involved and an angle. Now, I'm not using this side, so I'm not, used, I'm not ever trying to find it, or I'm not leaving it, so we're not going to use the cosine rule. So we're going to use the sine rule. So when you're trying to do these questions, it's always a good idea to label the triangle how you want to label it. Currently, it's labeled QRP, and we're trying to find this angle at R here. But um, when I'm labeling up a triangle for this rule, I label uh, the, the angle I want to find A. So the opposite side to that is little a. The angle that I'm given is B, and the opposite of that is little p. It doesn't matter even if this was labeled A, B, C. I would relabel it how I want it. So then I can apply the rule. So you don't ever need this part of the rule because you always just label it A's and B's. Also, with the sine rule, the sine rule could be written with the sides on top or it could be written with the angles on top. If you're trying to find an angle, you should write it with the angle on top. It makes it easier to solve and uh, less likely that you'll make a mistake. So I've changed it around. So we've got the sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. Put the numbers in. We get sine of A, which is what I'm trying to find, over... 11 equals the sine of b, which is 85, over 18. Okay, now I can bug that into the calculator, get that answer, and then times by 11. I'm just going to rearrange it, so I'm times by 11 before I put it in the calculator, so I don't have to do multiple stages in the calculator. Get my calculator out. Make sure I'm in degrees mode with a little d. Type it in the value that I want, so 11 times the sine, that's going to be a fraction, so put the fraction in, sine 85, don't forget to close any brackets, all over 18, and that gives me the answer 0 0.60878, and so on. So the sine of the angle is that. Always when you're using trigonometry, trying to find the angle, you need to find use the sine of the minus one button, so shift sine. Let's just write that down. So a is going to be sine to the minus one, the inverse sine or the arc sine of that number there. Now obviously we've left that number into the calculator, which is the answer from the last part. Don't try to retype numbers in because that's less less accurate. The calculator is storing more information than it, than you can see. So the answer to that is 37.5017 um, we just want 35 37.5 we could round it to the nearest degree 38 but as it's halfway between it's probably best to leave it to three significant figures so there's your three marks now you would get one mark for getting to that stage there where you put all the numbers into the formula so that's one method mark for that stage Getting to the 0 0.8, 0 0.608 is another method mark, and your final mark for your answer is 37.5. Always set your work out neatly, each stage at a time, in case you don't get the answer right, and therefore you get more marks this way.